My name is Teresa Clinton. I live in southern Missouri and we live in an area that doesn't have any type of large medical facility for rare cancers. And I knew without a shadow of a doubt that MD Anderson is where I needed to go for my cancer treatment. I have a really rare cancer just like everybody else does, but this is a uniquely rare cancer. And there's only two places in the U.S. that can treat it, and it's Washington, D.C., and it's Texas. Right before the flight leaves, the day, the day over the day before, I find out my insurance company is going to let me be seen at Texas. And that was a two-month two fight. And we get here, and we're checking in, and then they say, well, MD Anderson doesn't accept my insurance. And I was absolutely devastated, just completely heartbroken, because I knew Texas is where I needed to be. At that moment, I, fly, I sent out a mass message to everyone saying, I need a mountain moved, please pray. I need a mountain moved because I needed to be in Texas. I knew that's where I needed to be. And he comes back and he says, um, he comes back with his business office lady and they're like, no, you're, you're accepted. We can treat you. And I, I, I had to stop the meeting. I was like, no, 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 no. We were just told an hour before that you didn't. So I don't know where the lack of communication was or a mountain had just been moved. But regardless, we found out we were going to be accepted there. And they say, get prepared for seven weeks to be in Texas. And now I'm a single parent. I have one income. This was not something that I was <laughs> prepared for, nor my mom, because she would have to come with me. She wasn't ever going to leave my side. The social worker handed me a piece of paper that gave me a list of um, options of places to stay. And one of the things that she said was that this place called Hope Cancer Retreat. And um, I had called and Miss Jenny had answered the phone and I told her what I needed. Um, and then I told her what type of cancer I had and then the unique kind of treatment that I was gonna need. Things had happened behind the scenes where she was able to provide me with a cottage with a, a private room, with a recliner, which is something that I would need. Um, and like with this type of cancer, I, there's certain things that I need, and she was able to give those things to me. And um, come to find out, she had actually prayed that I would get to stay with her. And that was really overwhelming because somebody prays that you get to stay with them. Like that's that's pretty a pretty big deal and my mom and I show up in the middle of the night and Ginny had the heat on. The house was perfect and cozy and we're from the country and it's a cottage and it's a hunting theme and there's this big deer and my mom just broke down crying. She was so, we were so relieved to know that we had a home to come home to. Um, I have to eat every two to three hours and I have to take these special baths and I have to do all this stuff and I needed that privacy, I needed the comfort of a home. And we're a small town and not the city, so this is, I mean, it, it, I can't tell you how blessed. I can't tell you how blessed. There's a little system, if your little door is open, if your little blinds are open, that means you're open for company, and if, you're, if the blinds are shut, then you're not. And so I, I appreciate that, because there's times when I don't feel good and I don't want any company, and then there's times when I'm like, everybody come over and hang out, you know? So. And, they, and what's super neat is one of my first weeks here, she had a big game night here in, this, in the great room. I, that was my first time to hang out with other cancer patients because that's a foreign concept to me. They were normal people and they laughed and had a good time and it's nice to just forget about it for a minute. And I met friends that, at that bunco night that I will probably have forever. With everything else that I'm dealing with, knowing that I can come home, get comfortable, relax, get sick if I get sick, and not have to worry about anyone else, and knowing that my mom is comfortable and she can take care of me is priceless. We have, I call it my, my second home because it, it's designed like, its decor is what my home would look like, it smells like my home, it looks like my home, it's actually better than my home in some perspectives. But it's comfortable and the, it's everything about it is just homey. And all I can say is God has really stepped in and taken care of me. There was a big benefit in my hometown for me while I was gone. And the whole community came together and did that for me while I was gone.
I just want you to know, thank you for loving me. Thank you for taking care of me. Thank you for taking care of my mom. And thank you for doing this. I don't imagine how much work you have to go through in order to provide this, but you've given us a home and you've given me peace and love and I wanna say thank you.